Welcome to TNG Sports Ebony with Michael J. Babcock, and more importantly, the legend Master P is with us. Master P, what's going on, man? I'm good, I'm good, man. Just, uh, you know, yeah. just get into it, man. The hip-hop right legend, here. sports legend. You got a video game coming out. You got all sorts of stuff. We're going to get to that a little later. But we're going to start with the big story of the day. Joe Kim Noah of the New York Knicks refusing to go to a dinner with cadets at West Point, uh, where his New York Knicks team has been training for the past couple of days, because he says he does not support war. Now, Joe Kim Noah says this is not a protest. He's not protesting, but really, I don't think there's any other way to look at this other than a protest. He's refusing to go to a dinner with cadets for a specific reason. Now, he has released a statement through a rep saying, quote, he has the utmost respect for the military members and cadets. He just doesn't agree with war. Now, of course, this follows, you know, guys like Colin Kaepernick. He's protesting the national anthem. Uh, Master P, what do, you, what do you make of this? I mean, do you think this is a misguided attempt at a protest or do you support Joe Kim Noah here? Well, I like Joe, but the thing is, this is about the young guys that are fighting for our country. I right. mean, we got to support them. And uh, when a guy going to stand alone like this, he's by himself. I mean, LeBron James says he's not supporting kneeling down for the national anthem. So it's not going to work unless you have all the top players doing this. And I just think that he's just standing alone. You know, if, if everybody was going against this, then it would be a statement. And, and is, isn't it kind of misguided? Th these cadets are young kids. They don't make the decision on what whether they go to war or not. They're just there, and if they're sent off to fight, then they'll fight. But why disrespect the kids? I, I, hang out with them. It would be a great moment for them, and I feel like he's disrespecting them by not going. Well, you know, I think he's trying to make a statement, but I don't think he really understands what's going on, like, in what we are fighting for. You know, this is not our fight. This is not our war, but these kids have nothing to do with it. Right. So. Isn't it like, P, if you have a problem, go talk to Barack Obama, or, or go talk to the generals, people that actually make the decisions, right? Yeah, well, you know, this is America now, and people got the freedom of speech, so people exercising that, and uh, I respect that, but I think he need to take that to the right source. Yeah, I think so, too. Now, look, he did go to his coach, and he says he was granted permission from the coach to miss the specific dinner. Now, he was the only member of the team that was gone. If you look at the video uh, of the actual dinner, you can see Carmelo Anthony was there, uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis was there, Derek Rose was there. Do you guys think the Knicks should have made him go to the dinner, even if he didn't want to go? No, I don't think you can make him go. I mean, if the guy says he doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't want to be there, you got to respect his opinion. I just think that if he wants, if he really wants to take a stand against war, then to kind of snub the cadets, I think it's the wrong way to go about it. I think at the very least he should have gone, talked to the kids, interacted with them, learned from them. Maybe they learned from him. They see his point of view. They educate each other, and it's a positive discussion that emerges. I think just not going, it robs everybody the opportunity to kind of have a real discussion about the real issues. Don't you guys think? Well, I think it takes a lot away from the whole team atmosphere. So if you're going to do something, you need to do it as a team. And the NBA organization, I think that he's going to get a lot of flack down the line. But, you know, big shout out to him for just standing yeah. up. You must be, you're a hell of a basketball player. Everybody knows this. Uh, I think you had what, two contracts with NBA teams back in the day. I played with the Charlotte Hornets and the Toronto Raptors. Okay, so all right, you look at the Knicks, and the Knicks got Joe Kim Noah, they got Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose is dealing with rape allegations, right? It's a lot of off the court stuff. When you look at that team, what do you think? I mean, do they got a shot or is it too much drama for the Knicks to be any good this year? Well, I think they put together a great team, but it's like, uh, how are you going to compete against LeBron James? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that's the national champs. They still got the same team from last year. So I don't see nothing really different with the Knicks. I think they may be two or three years away from competing with, like, a Cleveland. So they're going to be heartbroken in New York again? I mean. No. You know, you <laughs> no. Know, oh, we can't I, take it anymore, P. You know, so y'all might win. Y'all might as well get ready, man, because it's going to be a long <laughs> year for y'all. And if Derrick Rose get hurt. Yeah. Man. The when Derrick Rose gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to a much lighter topic. Antonio Brown, the best wide receiver in the NFL. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One of the best wide receivers he's in the, the NFL. He's the Arguably best. the best. At the very least, he's got the best hairdo in the NFL. He, we, he, we agree on he that? Do, he does, and maybe the best cleat game also, yeah, Evan. That's the thing. All right, last week, remember, he got in trouble because he had customized cleats uh, with his kids on the actual cleats. Let's take a picture right here. He wore these in the game. You can see they're blue and yellow. They have pictures of his kids on the cleat at halftime of the game. He was told, change your cleats or else, there's gonna be, or else we're not going to let you play. And 
second half of the game. He changed his cleats. But that's not stopping him from getting more customized cleats for this upcoming game this week. Take a look at what he did this time. Instead of uh, his kid's face, he did a tribute to Arnold Palmer, the legend, the golf legend who just who passed, passed away. away. He got special black and gold cleats made with, Je with Arnold Palmer's face on it. It says the king right there. It's a tribute to the golf legend. We spoke with Antonio Brown. He says, look, I'm going to wear these cleats. Uh, I respect the guy. I want to show you know how much I appreciate him and respect him. Here's the thing. They have a personalized message on it, right, Babcock? Yeah, here's the thing. Last week, the cleats were all wrong. They had a personalized message, which is not allowed, and the color scheme was wrong. This time, Evan, at least they're Steelers color, so he'll be okay from that standpoint. I still think he's going to get fined, though, for the personal so, message. So remember, he has said if he gets fined, it doesn't matter because it's nothing to a boss, and he signed that big, <laughs> fat contract. He is so rich, he could afford a $10,000 fine. Master P, what do you think, dude? I think, you know, the shoes is about a legend. It's about uh, a good cause. It's about bringing awareness and letting somebody live on. I'll be disappointed if the, if the NFL find him this time because it's the king, man. You can't make him take those shoes off, and yeah. I wouldn't change him look, look, if I was him. The NFL has shown some leniency this year. They didn't find guys for wearing 9-11 tribute cleats. I'm not saying this is the same thing, but it is recognize somebody who passed away, so maybe they give him a break this week. Yeah, he need it, man, because he's, he's doing something that nobody else would do. Can you ever have enough money, Master P, where you don't care about getting fined $10,000? <laughs> I don't know. You know, uh, when I played in the NBA, a ten thousand dollar fine wouldn't be would mean nothing. You know, I, I think this is not gonna hurt this guy. It's, it's, he's, he's making a statement right now. Remember when they tried to find Randy Moss for making obscene gestures when he mooned the crowd after scoring yeah. a touchdown a long time ago? Yeah. Remember yeah. what his answer was to that? I'll pay it? straight cash, homie. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the mentality Antonio Brown has. Do you think the NFL needs to lighten up? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go to his next game, man, and, and wear the same shoes, man. <laughs> that's just, what I'm talking about. You know, we, it's time to make a statement, man. It's about the king right now. I love it. All right, before we get to the next topic, we've got a special guest. We've got Van joining us uh, via satellite. Van, I know this is a special moment for you because I know how much you love Master P. Uh, what do you want to say to him, man? Well, first of all, I want to tell P, I'm from Baton Rouge, man. I grew up on the music. Shout out to you, man. Uh, I got a new album coming out called Louisiana Hot Sauce, so we just spreading that Louisiana love, man. Now, Vin, something that we talk about all the time in our office is the fact that you got guys like Jay-Z, you got guys at Cash Money Records that are, that are going from the hip-hop game, from the music game, and transitioning into becoming agents and getting into the sports world, right? Representing athletes. Jay-Z's built Rock Nation Sports doing pretty well. Uh, Cash Money signing guys. But the original guy that did it before anybody else is this guy right here master P you started your own agency back in the day famously signed Ricky Williams I mean you know more about what's going on than a lot of these guys how do you feel about guys like Jay-Z and all these guys starting the sports agencies and kind of really following your lead Oh uh, man, you know, uh, big up to him, man, because it's enough money for everybody. And, uh, you know, it was something that by me playing sports, I kind of know a lot more about it. But, you know, a lot of those guys getting into it for the business thing. And if, if you know a lot of athletes and you could get them to sign up with your company, why not do it? So, I mean, the, the, the Ricky Williams deal was such a, a famous thing back in the day. Do you still, you still talk to him? You guys still have a relationship? No, I mean, the, the Ricky Williams relationship, it probably lasted like a year or two. But Ricky Williams was the type of guy that he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And right. I mean, he wanted $8 million up front. He didn't care what the incentives was. And if he didn't do that deal with me, he was going to do it with somebody else. Right, right. So he was poor. He didn't have any money. He needed the upfront money. And he thought that $8 million, he was going to turn it into something else. He had some other business. Right. ideas, right. but he, he just didn't stick with it. I mean, he ended up making about $14 million, but he also had other problems, too, because, you know, once you get that money, you get lazy. So a lot of athletes don't realize yeah. they, their career, how long it's going to last if you don't have the same enthusiasm that you had in, in the beginning. So I know the one thing that you're, you're passionate about, speaking of like, I think this is a good transition right into it, uh, a lot of athletes, they sign these big deals, they make a lot of money, and then they blow a lot of money. Guys, I mean, we were just reading articles about Darius Miles the other day, who reportedly, you know, lost a fortune filed for bankruptcy after making tens of millions of dollars in the NBA. And then you got guys like Warren Sapp who had bankruptcy issues, uh, Latrell Sprewell, Evander Holyfield, guys who made tons of money that, that can't seem to hold on to it. You are a guy who is who is familiar with the, the mindset of, of these athletes because you dealt with a lot of them. I mean, what are your thoughts on that stuff? Well, the thing is, I think the NBA and the NFL, they need to watch some of these financial advisors. If you look at, like, Tim Duncan, 
he lost $25 million right. for investing in stocks, investing in oil, things that they know nothing about. I mean, they 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 uh, they take themselves away from their real friends once these financial advisors get to them. And I don't think a lot of these guys would lose $25 million hanging out with some of the guys they grew up with. I think they're making investments that are not tangible in things they know nothing about. And these financial advisors taking a lot of advantage of them. I try to talk to the guys that I know and say, hey, man, invest in real estate, invest in some things that are tangible. So when you do need that money, you could go back and get it. But, you know, when you invest in stocks, man, when you lose, you lose. And so a lot of these athletes, they are uneducated. They probably been playing sports all their life. They've been easing through school. So by the time they get there, I mean, look at like Tim Duncan. He's a premier athlete. He went right. to Wake Forest. He, he, he is one of the smartest ones. So I'm thinking, how could this happen? Financial advisors are taking advantage of, of, of our minority athletes. So, so on the flip yeah. side of the coin, who, who's done a good job? I mean, uh, who, who do you think has, has really held together and managed their money in a way where they've really exploited it in a way where they've, they've done well? Well, you look at Magic Johnson. You look at Michael Jordan. Look at LeBron James. LeBron James is putting on people that he grew up with and people that have been around him and allowing them to go out and make money too. I think a lot of these athletes need to look at some of the people around them and not just have them hanging around and have them going out doing business for them because they can kind of trust those people. They, they've been around them a long time. You get around somebody that know you you know nothing about financial literacy, they're going to take advantage of you. And, and, and probably before your career is over, they're going to have more money than you, a bigger house than you, and you're going back to the ghetto where you, where you, where you come from. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You you are you are extremely knowledgeable in all this. Obviously, yeah. if if an NBA player, a professional athlete, called you up, called the uh, the No Limit Forever offices and said, "Hey, man, I want you to be my financial advisor. I want Master P in my life to help me with my money." Is that something that you would consider doing? Well, my thing is, I don't want to be a financial advisor. But what I want to do is, if somebody called me for help, I would show them like the steps you need to take, what you need to do. Like, okay, go open up a real estate company. Uh, go open up a travel agency if you always traveling, you know, you're spending a lot of money with these credit cards to where some of that money is coming back to you. I think it's, it's pretty one-on-one -on -one basic business, so my doors is open for people that want advice. I mean, I feel like I've been through a lot. I've been through ups, downs, everything. I mean, the best people are is people that are experienced, so nobody's perfect, but at the same time, nobody would lose $25 million if some they dealing with people that really care about them, and I care about you know, my people. I want to see them successful. And, can, and I, can, will you be my financial advisor? If you need me, my brother, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome back to TMZ Sports Ebony with Michael J. Babcock and, of course, the legend, Master P. Master P, what's going on, dude? It's all good, man. It's all good. Get money. Real quick, real quick, one thing. Who's your prediction, your early prediction to win the Super Bowl this year? Who you got? Um, I'm going with Pittsburgh. Man, it's a part of them, my Saints, man, you know. They turn it around or is it too late? It ain't looking too good for the city, <laughs> man. No. All right, you got a lot of stuff going on besides the music, besides sports, besides everything you got going on, TV shows. Uh, you also have a brand new video game coming out. It's basically, if you want to be a boss, you can do this in this video game. Master P, tell us a little about this, man. Well, Give Money is the world's most dangerous video game. People comparing it to Grand Theft Auto. I mean, we, we're the competition for Grand Theft Auto. It's about making choices and decisions. You make the right decision in charge, then you can get to the money. You make the wrong, you probably end up dead in prison. This is a real life experience. This is one of those games that everybody got to have. The whole country is on this. Every kid's calling. I mean, this is the first African-American owned minority technology video game. What's the premise of the game, P, and how involved were you and actually making it and producing I'm, it. I'm all the way involved because it takes place in New Orleans. There's no video game that takes place in the swamps. And you know, you got crooked cops, you got, you know, you got thugs, you got villains, you got good people. And it's also, it's the only video game that are giving back to the community. So I got a question for you. Yeah. So in this game, you're basically running around Louisiana? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's based on Louisiana because okay. if you look at a Grand Theft Auto, it's probably based on Miami and California. Right, right. Uh, this is based on Bourbon Street, uh, uh, all the parts of New Orleans. Okay, uh, so my question is, can yeah. you go to LSU in this game and apply to be the new coach of the football team? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the, 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 the programmers we have are in Korea working on this right now, so you know what? <laughs> we just might go to LSU and find a coach. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Master P, I can't thank you enough. I know you're a busy guy, so thank you so much for spending time with us, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, all